Welcome to Black Horror Stories. Tonight, we bring you a chilling tale that will keep you on the edge of your seat until the very last word. Imagine moving into what seems like the perfect home, only to uncover a dark, hidden secret that threatens your very existence. This is the terrifying experience one woman faced, and the eerie events that followed are beyond imagination. This is The Haunting of the Rental House. About two years ago, around the period of 2021 to 2022, I was looking for a new rental home. Given the housing shortage and my urgent need for a house, I didn't want to be too picky about finding a suitable place. Eventually, I didn't even care what neighborhood the house was in, how it looked, or how far it was from the city. At some point, I saw an online advertisement for a house that I liked. But unfortunately, it stated that the house had already been rented out. Out of sheer stubbornness, I called the number in the advertisement pretending I didn't know the house was taken. Maybe I could persuade the owner to rent the house to me instead. To my great surprise, the owner told me that the house was available again. I made an appointment with the gentleman to view the house. Strangely enough, he seemed even more enthusiastic than I was, calling me repeatedly to ask if I was on my way and how far I was. Are you still coming? Is it still possible for you to come? He asked every time. I assured him I was on my way each time, but he kept calling. I really want to help you, madam. You need to hurry because I don't want to rent the house to anyone else. I want to rent it to you, he said again. I felt reassured, thinking to myself, wow, what a kind owner. He seems like such a good person and he's so concerned, always calling me. When I arrived at the house, it turned out to be a two bedroom house. At that moment, it was fine. I knew I wouldn't stay there for long because I usually don't stay in one place for too long. If I sometimes don't feel happy with the environment, I leave quickly. I always follow my instincts because I have a gift, clairvoyance where I can sense when something is not right. I accepted the house and moved in. At first, I didn't feel any negative energies there. The first night in the new house passed normally. I was so tired, so I slept like a dog. The very next morning, the owner called to ask how I had slept. I told him I had slept wonderfully, and it was true. Everything was relaxed, nothing to complain about. The second day, nothing happened either, and everything was fine. On the third day, nothing happened during the day. But at night, my daughter got up to go to the bathroom around 3 a.m. When she finished using the bathroom, she suddenly ran nervously and upset to my bedroom. She was literally trembling, saying, Mom, I just saw a short man running past. I tried to reassure her, saying, Girl, you're sleepy. There's nothing there. Just go back to sleep and don't worry. But I knew she wasn't lying because her fear gave me goosebumps and my skin crawled. So I decided to pray, asking that my children and I would not be bothered by whatever was in the house. I also spoke aloud saying, if there's something in this house, show yourself to me. Don't show yourself to my kids. I want to see you, so show yourself to me. I'm not afraid of supernatural entities, but I am cautious. I just wanted to see what I was dealing with if there was something there. People, I prayed that I wanted to see. Yes, if it was there, I wanted to see it. I fell asleep and immediately received a message in my dream. 
I saw a short man with a very large head compared to his body. His body was completely covered in white powder. He let me know that he lived in the second bedroom. At that moment, no one was sleeping there. My children were sleeping with me in my room. Apparently, I was screaming and fighting in my dream because I woke up to a phone call from the owner. His house was right next to ours, essentially our neighbor. He asked, neighbor, are you all right? I heard a lot of commotion in your house all night. You were speaking very loudly. It seemed like you were really upset. I said nothing, just listened without answering. But now it seemed that the thing wanted to assert itself because I knew it was there. So it made less effort to hide. I noticed more strange things in the house and again entered a trance to drive those things away. Of course, the owner pretended to know nothing and acted concerned. I let it be and said nothing to him. Later that day, I was washing dishes when one of the glasses slipped from my hands and then it started again. Something invisible began smashing all my glassware onto the floor with force. It was terrible because I had so many beautiful plates, glasses, and dishes. But when that thing was done breaking everything, I had nothing left of all my glass sets. I had literally two large boxes full of dishes and everything was destroyed. As time went by and we lived there, I began to feel weak and lost interest in everything. My life seemed to be deteriorating. I hardly went outside anymore and barely saw the street. By nature, I've always been someone who likes to stay indoors. But in this case, it became extreme and was no longer normal. The only way I saw the street was from inside the house because we lived right next to it. And I could still see people driving by and sometimes looking in. One day, I decided to sit on the balcony because I was fed up with having no interest in anything and not wanting to go anywhere. But when I sat there, everyone who walked by stared at me like I was an attraction. At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but over time, it became clear that people were really staring at me. Everyone in the neighborhood did it, and I didn't know why. Did they find me beautiful or ugly? Did I take something from them? What exactly is going on here? This can't be normal. Why are these people staring at me like that? I wondered. That evening, I went to bed with many questions. It really occupied my mind. And again, I had a dream. This time, an old Indian man appeared to me. He said, girl, come here, come closer. I want to tell you something. You don't need to be afraid of me. I walked closer to him, curious about what he wanted to tell me. Listen, my son killed me in this house. He tells everyone that I committed suicide, but that's not true. I would never do such a thing to myself. He did this to me for wealth and possessions. He took everything from me, even my life, the man complained. He looked truly broken. In the dream, the man took me into a spiritual world, leading my spirit to a place. He then said to me, go into my son's house and take a necklace for me. I'll tell you exactly where it is. Once you have the necklace, throw it far away. This necklace is not an ordinary necklace. It's a talisman to keep my spirit away from his house so I can't harm him. He's afraid I will terrorize him because he knows he has blood on his hands. With this necklace, he's managed to keep me away from his house all this time. And I've been trapped here, in this house where you now live. Which is why I had to disturb every tenant to help me. But no one understood me. In the spiritual world, I retrieved the talisman from the son's house. And as the father wished, I threw the talisman far away. The man was very grateful 
and said to me, now do me a favor, move out of here as soon as possible. My son will soon realize that you helped me because he's deeply involved in the occult. He will get a sign from the demonic things he's involved with. He's not a good man. It will not be good for you. I don't want anything to happen to you, so take your children and move out as soon as possible. I woke up with a shock and knew this was not just a dream. I had entered a trance-like state and had a vision. A clear message, I now know the truth. My seemingly kind landlord was not as innocent and nice as I initially thought. I knew I had to move out soon. But moving couldn't happen quickly because it's not easy to find a rental house. So I continued to live there for a while and searched for another place. Meanwhile, I became very ill and then my children also became sick one after the other. They started passing strange green stools. I shared this in a Reddit group, explaining what was happening to my family and me. People from all sides advised me to move out, believing it was poisoning. This turned out to be true because I called the Bureau of Public Health to check. And when they arrive, they found dead frogs in my water tank. It was very strange because how could those frogs have gotten in there? It was clear to me that this was the landlord's doing. He wasn't so nice anymore. From then on, I decided to buy water and not use tap water anymore. I trusted nothing and feared for my children's safety. As if that wasn't bad enough, the landlord suddenly came one day and took the air conditioner out of the house. He started dismantling everything without any significant reason. It was clear he knew I was onto him, just as his deceased father had told me his son would soon realize I knew too much. And the father was right because the landlord suddenly started treating me very harshly and strangely, even though nothing had happened. Since the air conditioner was removed, it became unbearably hot in the house. The windows were useless. You couldn't open them. So it was like an oven in the house. I endured a lot of suffering during that time with the landlord constantly sabotaging us, but I didn't have another house yet. So I had to stay strong. One day I posted an advertisement on Facebook because I wanted to sell something. I soon received a message from a gentleman interested in buying the item. We arranged for him to come to my place to pick it up. But when the man heard my address, he immediately said, uh, no thank you, I'm not coming there. I was shocked, why such a reaction? The man was enthusiastic about the item, but as soon as he knew my address, he lost interest. I asked him, why don't you want to come here? Is there a reason? Do you know this house? Or the owner, maybe? At first, he didn't want to tell me anything. But I said, I have children and live in this house. If there's something I need to know, please tell me. I don't want anything to happen to my family because I know nothing. We are people and we should help each other, right? He then asked me, do you sleep well in that house without any problems? I said, no, actually none of us sleep well in this house. He then revealed, madam, the house you are now living in used to be a store. Did you know that? I didn't know, but when he told me, it made sense. Well, the landlord killed his own father in that building. I didn't want to get involved but move out of there as soon as possible. That son is not a good person and everyone suspects he is the murderer. Move out, madam. I didn't need to be told twice. I don't know how I managed it, but I packed my bags and moved out of that house. The deceased man had also urgently advised me to move. And now 
a stranger had confirmed it, so I had no reason to stay in that house. Especially not with a landlord next door who had killed his own father. No, I couldn't stay there any longer. We lived there for a total of seven months. Remember, not every horror story is a mere tale. Some are real life experiences that teach us to trust our instincts and heed the signs around us. Did she do the right thing to move out of that house? Let us know in the comment section. Until next time, stay safe, stay curious, and keep your lights on.